Up until now, I've only used free software to make my games. I recently bought a sprite, but I haven't even used it yet. That's six years of game development using free software. Since I get asked so frequently about the software I use, I decided to make this video to go over it. Links to all the software I'll mention can be found in the description. First up is music software. Music software is a category a lot of people just can't seem to find stuff for sometimes. I'll start off with beginner friendly stuff first and move on to more advanced stuff. Personally, I found that the full DAWs can be a bit daunting and hard to get into. It's awful for learning how to compose music in general because you've got too much to work with and too many ways to cover up your mistakes. I honestly think that chiptune is a great way to start because you can't get away with good instruments and nice effects. You have to make good tunes and your mistakes show, much like low res pixel art. The first tool I used and the most simple tool of the bunch is Beatbox. This one is actually a web based tool and music is saved in the form of insanely long URLs, although you can't export it as a WAV file. It's meant for chiptune and it's super easy to jump into. You can just click around for a bit and figure out stuff pretty easily. Beatbox has been updated many times since I first used it and it appears to have quite a a few more features now. Even with the new updates that add more customization to the sounds, it's pretty limited in its instruments. I originally stopped using it because you couldn't play chords without it sounding warbly, however that appears to no longer be an issue with the new updates. Here's an example I found on Twitter by Jumbus of what can be done with Beatbox. <laughs> The second music tool I've used is Busca Kyo. It's got a pretty massive library of instruments, yet it's only slightly harder to pick up and use than Beatbox. This is what I've used for most of my games I've released, and I only recently stopped using it. Busca Kyo is a great choice if you don't want to learn to use the full DAWs. Here's one of the tracks I made using Busca Kyo for Super Potato Bra. And finally, there's a tool that I currently use, which is LMMS. LMMS is the best free DAW that I've tried. It's loaded up with features, and it's a huge step up from Busca Kyle. Unfortunately, as you'd expect with it being free, there are a few annoying bugs that I've run into. It also has compatibility issues with a lot of VSTs. Even with the issues it has, it's still a pretty great DAW. LMMS itself is somewhat popular, so there are plenty of tutorials online if you're looking to get into it. Here's one of the tracks I made for Drawn Down Abyss using LMMS. Next up is artwork software. The most advanced tool I use for artwork is Krita. I use it for anything that isn't pixel art. In game dev, I mostly use it as an aid for various portions of promotional materials such as my trailers. I also make all my thumbnails for these YouTube videos with it, although that's not game dev. Krita provides many advanced tools and is great for general artwork. I've tried both Krita and GIMP, but I prefer Krita for its tools and better performance. Krita can also be used for pixel art, but I haven't really done it outside of a few card images I've used for John Down Abyss. There are two more tools that I use for pixel art. The first one is actually a tool I made for myself because I never found a tool for pixel art animation that I liked. It's called PX Editor, or Pix Editor. I never decided on how to pronounce it, and I use it for all my pixel art animations. It's a bit restrictive in some areas and heavily dependent on key bindings. It's important to read the manual text file if you decide to use it, otherwise you won't know what you're doing. It's got quite a few basic useful features for pixel art animation. It has onion skin arrangeable palettes, basic selection tools, flood fill, layers, and opacity. It only has a way to set a universal frame duration, not a frame duration for specific frames. This was because I normally write those in when I configure my animations, not when I draw them. If you've got $15, it's probably worth it to buy a sprite. I've never been able to find a good free pixel art animation tool, and my own tool is rather lacking in many areas. 
The final tool for artwork is the tool I use for everything that isn't animated. I can't really recommend it, but it gets the job done. Believe it or not, it's MS Paint. I use it because it's simplicity, saves a few seconds in opening and saving files. And here's a fun fact about MS Paint and Game Dev. The original Risk of Rain was actually made using it according to the team page on their game's website. While MS Paint can be used, I won't cover it any further because everyone knows what it is and I doubt anybody wants to use it. Now that I've gone through the music and artwork software, it's time to discuss software for sound effects creation. There are two tools I've used for computer generated sound effects. Both of these tools are super popular among people competing in game jams because you can make all the sounds for a game jam game in about a minute. The first one is SFXR, the second one is BFXR. They're both easy to use and quite powerful. BFXR is just a better SFXR, coming at the cost of being slightly more complicated. SFXR is pretty much only useful for retro style games. Both of these tools have buttons you can click to generate common sounds. Just look at this. While it's pretty easy to generate sounds using the software, I find it preferable in many cases to take the Foley route, where you make the sounds yourself and record them with a microphone. If you do this, you may need some software to make slight edits to the recording. I use Audacity for this. Audacity is fantastic for pretty much anything you need to do with audio. When it comes to Foley, I mostly use Audacity to cut out specific sounds I want, modify the pitch and speed, and reduce background noise. I also apply some other minor effects. Here's one of my favorite sounds I've made, which was actually done with my mouth and edited in Audacity. Finally, we've reached the last category, video related software. You might be wondering why there's a video category in here. The answer is similar to the reason I include uh, in the artwork section. It's because making trailers and other video form promotional materials are absolutely essential in game development, especially if you want to make money. For video editing, I have to recommend HitFilm Express. I've never seen anything that even comes close to it when it comes to free video editing software. There is a but here, and it's the reason why it sounded like I did air quotes on the free. It's not a super big deal, and I'm not entirely sure if this is still needs to be done, but after making an account, I had to make a post to social media advertising it to get access to the download. There weren't any issues when I deleted the tweet that I made, which is why I don't consider it a big issue. I can't say much as to the extent of the features of HitFilm because I'm not super experienced with it. What I can say is it's definitely got everything you need to make a low budget indie trailer. All my YouTube videos are edited with it and you can make stuff like the animation I've got at the end of my tutorial videos. The one warning I'll leave you with regarding the application itself is that it uses quite a lot of RAM. If you're watching this video in the first place, it's pretty likely you don't have a super beefy PC. When I was on my laptop with 4GB of RAM, I'd occasionally experience crashes when my laptop would start using swap space. Just make sure you save frequently if you don't have much RAM. GIFs are a pretty big part of promotional materials for games, and yes, I'll be saying GIF and not GIF. I recommend GIF Cam for recording GIFs. It's pretty easy, you just move the window to the right spot and click record. For video editing and streaming, I recommend OBS. It does both, and it has things like scenes you can switch between and that you can build up from different media sources. For time lapses, I recommend Chrono Lapse. I've only used it once, but almost all of the game developers I know that make time lapses use it. The time lapses are recorded through periodical screenshots, so you'll need to convert it to a video, which can be done through Chrono Lapse itself. If you're doing something short term, you may just want to use OBS and speed up the recording. That pretty much wraps up this video. With my personal experience in game development, I can confidently say that if you're a kid with no money who wants to get into game development, it's entirely doable to make enough money off of selling games made with free software to make a decent wage and to afford all the fancy paid software that everyone uses. Oh, and uh, A-Sprite is like $15, so you might not want to skimp so hard in that area if you're doing pixel art. Hopefully y'all will stick around, and I'll see you in the next video. Six years. Six years of MSP.